What's most amazing about philanthropist Grace Groner wasn't her vast wealth. It was rather how she got there. Grace was orphaned at age 12 and never married. Most of her life she lived alone in a one-bedroom house, and she worked her entire career as a secretary. She lived a pretty humble and quiet life, so when she eventually passed away in 2010, everyone was surprised that she had $7 million to give away to charity. People who knew her asked, where did Grace get all that money? So here's how she did it. Grace took humble savings from a meager salary and enjoyed 80 years of compounding in the stock market. That was it. Now, just a few weeks after Grace died, an unrelated investing story hit the news. Richard Fascone, former vice chairman of Merrill Lynch, declared personal bankruptcy, and he had to fight off foreclosures on two of his homes. One of them had a monthly mortgage payment of $66,000. Richard was kind of the opposite of Grace. He was educated at Harvard and became so successful in the investing industry that he retired in his 40s. But heavy borrowing and illiquid investments eventually did him in. So the same year that Grace left a sizable fortune to charity, Richard filed for bankruptcy. These two juxtaposing stories demonstrate how your level of wealth depends way more on your financial behavior than your annual income. And unlike other fields such as medicine or engineering where professionals tend to be a lot better than people with no training, there's actually little to no correlation with being an expert in finance and actually being good with money. A big reason for this is because personal finance is heavily driven by how you behave with money and behavior is very hard to teach, especially at the point in life where most people start to manage their own money. So it's a good idea to learn about behavioral finance as early as possible. Some people live below their means and invest systematically, while others strive for a more expensive lifestyle. It's not smarts or education level that separates the two, it's just behavior. And neither way is right or wrong, but it is very important to understand your own behavior around money because it does affect how you experience life. As Naval once tweeted, people who live far below their means enjoy a freedom that people busy upgrading their lifestyles can't fathom.